So it's early January, it's early in the morning as well, and I'm out for a walk to forage some rose hips to make rose hip syrup with. Now rose hip syrup is really tasty, but it's also supposed to be really good for the immune system because it's so high in vitamin C, which is especially good at this time of the year because we all seem to get colds and flus. Now rose hips are foraged normally in autumn and winter. I started foraging this, well last year, in October and you say it's January now and they're still going strong. So they've got a really long harvest period. Um, and what you'll tend to find is that all of the rose hips on any given bush will be ready at about the same time as each other. But there's a lot of variation in when each bush is ready to harvest. But how do you know when to harvest rose hips? Well, if you get your finger and thumb and pinch a rose hip, if it's still really hard, it's not ready to harvest. But if it gives way and it's really soft and wrinkly normally, um, and maybe a bit of pulp comes out when you squeeze it, that's when they're perfect to harvest. So let's go and see uh, if we can find some rose bushes and harvest some rose hips. So I've harvested the rose hips. I'm going to take them back to the kitchen and show you how to make the rose hip syrup. Begin by combining equal weights of water and sugar to make a plain syrup. For every 100 grams of rose hips, add two to 300 grams of both water and sugar. Most recipes recommend using more rose hips than I do, but I find that using the method that I'm about to show you, you can get a lot more syrup from your rose hips without sacrificing any flavour. Heat up your water and sugar while stirring it until it turns completely clear. This means that all the sugar is dissolved and you have your base syrup which is ready to be flavoured with the rose hips. Now it's time to prepare your rose hips. Pull the dead black pieces off either end of the rose hips. Add your rose hips to the syrup and bring it to the boil while mashing the rose hips thoroughly with a potato masher. Once the rose hips have been thoroughly mashed, I like to bring the mixture to the boil for a few minutes before transferring it to a slow cooker. Slow cooking ensures you get as much flavour from the rose hips as possible. The slow cooker that I like to use is called the Wonder Bag. It's easy to use, doesn't require any energy, and the company has an excellent social impact around the world. If you don't have a wonder bag, you can use another type of slow cooker or simply simmer it in a saucepan with a lid on for a few hours. But if you are simmering it in a saucepan, you'll need to remember to add a bit of water once it's finished slow cooking to replace any water that was lost with steam. Here's our syrup going into the wonder bag.
And here it is coming out again after about five hours. Steamy. The syrup is now flavoured, so it's time to remove the rose hips. Strain your syrup through a sieve or colander. This will remove the seeds and skins. Use a spoon to force as much liquid out of the sieve as possible. Now pass the syrup to a muslin cloth to remove any pulp and the fine hairs from inside the fruit. These fine hairs can irritate your throat if you swallow them, so it's a really good idea to remove them. The syrup can then be returned to the boil and poured into clean hot bottles. Heating the bottles to around 120 degrees Celsius in a fan oven for about 15 to 20 minutes stops them from cracking when you pour the hot syrup into them. It also improves the storage time of the syrup. Seal the bottles and label them with the name of the syrup and the date. I don't know how long this syrup will store for, but we keep ours in a cool place for around a month. When it's gone, we make some more, and when there's no more rose hips left on the bushes, we make a different type of syrup. Enjoy!